In this video, we'll take a first look at the brand new Swift charts announced at Dubdub 2022. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, open up Xcode 14 beta, and let's dive right in. So we're going to create a brand new application. We'll stick with the app template under the iOS tab, and I'll creatively call this Swift chart demo, perhaps. Of course, we need to stick with Swift UI because this is available only in Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, we'll expand our Xcode window, close up that right panel, and it looks like our preview has loaded rather quickly today. So let's take a look at how to leverage Swift charts and bring them on in. So first and foremost, we need to actually import the charts module, the charts framework to leverage Swift charts. I'm also going to change my preview to be in dark mode here so we can visualize things a little bit better and we'll dive right in. So we will initially create a navigation view with a scroll view in which we will be placing three or four different chart variants that we will look at. I'll also give this a title of charts. Now creating a chart is rather simple. We literally just create a chart and it has a view builder in which we can supply marks. Now there are a variety of marks available, things like a bar mark, a line mark, an area mark, a ruler mark, a point mark, and we're gonna look at a couple of them today. The premise here is that a chart is made up of one or more marks. Imagine a bar chart with you know one bar up to n number of bars. The other thing, which is pretty nice, is similar to lists, we can have this chart take an argument of a, a collection of models. And instead of having to you know, manually add a mark for each of our pieces of information, we can have the view builder take in you know, an iteration. So let's come up here and create a item, which is going to conform to the identifiable protocol. We will create our ID in here and we will create two properties, one being a string and another being a value of type double. Now on this content view, I'm gonna create items, which is going to be a array of items that will plot out in our chart. And we're just gonna stick a bunch of items in here. Perhaps this will be you know, departments in a company by profit. So first let's say we have engineering at 100 and let's copy and paste this a couple of times and change up these values maybe 35 just pick some arbitrary numbers here and let's also change up the actual types here as well so we'll say design operation sales and we'll do management so i'll abbreviate that and now that we have items up there we can tell our chart to basically loop over the items and we have item in now that we've got this set up, it's time to actually create one of those um, aforementioned marks. So we can create a bar mark here, and you'll see that there's a couple constructors to pick from. We're going to stick with the one with just a X and Y, where width and height is optional. So here we're going to supply both X and Y. Let me just line break this. And this is going to be the X axis, and we will say this is department, and this will be the item dot type. And the next thing is going to be a value, and this is going to be a profit. And we're gonna supply item.value, which we are, for our example, interpreting as profit. So if we go ahead and give this a command B and a preview refresh, we should see our uh, bar chart on the right-hand side, which in fact we do. Now, first of all, it looks a little smushed, and the reason for that is that we're not given you know, a implicit height. So I am going to add a height here of perhaps 200 as well as a little bit of padding. All right, look at that. We've got a bar chart that's looking pretty nice. Now, I do want to at least mention the very basic way to customize our marks, and that is specifying a foreground style. Now, you can style it by pieces of data where you can group various pieces of data by the same style and color or you can just add a standard style and maybe here we'll make this color.red and refresh our preview to make these red. Now we can also leverage this new gradient modifier available in the latest releases here. We can see a subtle gradient gets applied to our bars and literally with like 10 lines of code, we've created a pretty powerful bar chart. 
So let's take this a step forward and create a few more charts. And the greatest thing about this is that it is beyond trivial to do this. I'm actually just gonna copy and paste it and change this uh, bar mark to a line mark, as well as I'll change the style here. And just like that, we've created a line chart. Let's do it one more time for another one. And this time we're gonna do a area mark. I'll change the color again for our style. And we'll update our preview and scroll down and we boom, have a area chart. And finally, we'll close with one more just because I'm getting kind of excited with this now. We're gonna do a points mark, which is I believe a scattered plot chart. And I will change the color here to Let's try pink and see what that looks like. Go ahead and build, refresh your preview. By the way, you can refresh your preview with a command option P because I know myself I get tired of hitting that refresh button there. And just like that, we have our scattered plot plotted right there, no pun intended. And that is a very brief introduction to the brand new Swift charts that were introduced. You can really easily you know, take your model data, plot it on a variety of different charts. It's baked right into SwiftUI. Well, I should say it's baked into the charts framework that you can use in SwiftUI. No third party frameworks needed. Really simple, beautiful charts, go crazy. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I intend on doing several more videos and all the new dub dub announcements. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe before clicking away if you're new here and into iOS. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you all in the next one.